for the computer. Okay, so this is the most important part of functions, default parameters. So as you see, as we saw in this uh, previous example, num vehicles here, um, our goal is just to measure number of vehicles uh, at each entrance of a location and just add them together and print out like let's say here an average of 459 cars into UCR per hour. Okay, so that's pretty cool, very useful, like you can always input hour in UCR. But like let's say um, most of the time we're working at UCR and most of the time we'll be measuring by an hour, right? So it'll just become very repetitive to start inputting this every time, right? So this is when default parameters are useful. So sensor data it's just you, you always have to input that there's no way you're gonna have a default for that time length equals an hour so what it's saying is if I don't input time length it's gonna say okay I'm just gonna assume time length will be an hour and then location instead of saying like okay um, instead of like uh, me saying it will be UCR every time I'm just gonna assume it's UCR unless I otherwise specify you know what this time I measured it for a day or this time I measured it for I don't know UCR so if you do it like this, you notice how useful it is. Not only do you have to input juicier your data, and I get that same uh, output. Okay, so like let's say I do want to change something real quickly. Like let's say I don't know. Um, I'm I'm going to measure UCR before a day. So all I do is I do time blank. So you have to call that function like this equals. So instead of just putting it by order like we usually do, you have to actually call it down since it won't always be defi um, defined, uh, defined by default, ass assigned by default. So in this case, time length will be a day. Like this. UCR per day. So now it's going to know, okay, an average of 439 cards is UCR per day. Okay. So, but what if I want to define, like, let's say, okay, some other, um, I don't know, some other company came in. Okay, so we want to measure all of the cars entering, I don't know, UC San Diego. So I do UCSD. Location equals UCSD. Now you see how I can change that? Only when I need to. So you have those defaults since most like say 60-70% of the time you're working with this. Then it just becomes repetitive to add that every time. So you can actually add a default. But like let's say there is a situation where you need to change it, you can. And you don't have to change the function itself. So that's kind of the goal for this. Like I want to change a couple of things in the function. It won't always be the same. But I don't want to create new functions every time. So that's kind of the goal. Like. So yeah, so that's kind of the basic parts. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, Luis, uh, 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 let's say uh, when we're uh, defining the default uh, variables like time, length, and location, uh, when we are uh, uh, passing the parameters uh, in the, uh, when calling the functions, do we have to explicitly uh, define which are the variables like in uh, line 43 you wrote time length equal to day location equal to ucsd or uh, we can use just day and ucsd and it will just assume uh, according to the order no you have to always uh, always call it like this oh okay so when it's uh when you when you actually do a default like this then that yeah. case, it always you always have to add the equal sign you can't go with the order oh. and that actually comes to another thing like let's say you just can't put this let's say right here um, and then like this yeah. you're gonna create an error since the ones like here that are always um, required always have to go first and then the default cases go afterwards no, no I, I was just saying let's say uh, you have wrote that time length equal to day so what if we write just day Day, it won't work out so it won't work okay yeah that's what I uh, yeah. so like I'll show you since there is okay 
Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. So let's say we do day, like this, and then location. Oh, actually, you're right. You can do it. So I guess you can, but um, I wouldn't really recommend doing it that way since. Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason why since, like, let's say you do, you want to change the location UCR. Per, like, and then you get errors like this, an average of 459 cars enter UCR per UCR. So, yeah. So you can, but there are kind of reasons you shouldn't. Like, yeah. most of the time, I've always just, um just enter the variable. It also helps me keep track of what variable goes where. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess you actually are right. If you are going for old, like I say, old three of them, you can do that. So, but I've never really seen anybody do it like that. Like, they're always very strict about using, um, like, the equal signs. But actually, that's pretty interesting. I did not know that myself, honestly. So, okay. So, that's, like, kind of one of the simpler reasons to use default functions that's kind of a kind of like let's say you're working something and you don't want to enter some variable that's kind of repetitive but you might need to change it sometimes and that's just kind of a useful reason to use default functions or default parameters as well like either name is correct um, but here's the more useful version of it and I'll explain to you why this is so important that you understand this is um like let's say you have you want to create some functions to convert, I don't know, like stuff from mile, like kilometer to mile, mile to kilometer, uh, kilometer to meter, mile to feet. So now I created four functions to do that, right? And I'll print these out. So now we know that kilometer to mile, so 80 kilometers. Or is about 50 miles and we know that about 50 miles is 80.467 kilometers and then obviously 80 kilometers is about 80,000 meters and about and 50 miles is about 264,000 feet okay so that's simple enough right but like this kind of seems like redundant right all we're doing is multiplying one thing by another so why would we want to create four functions? And the first example will be kind of simple. Like let's say you're creating some function to do some manipulation of data. Like you have a data frame, and you have all these steps to create from like let's say what the what a company gives you in Excel to what you want outputted. However, sometimes, as you all probably know, those sheets can change, so you may need an extra step, or you might not need to take a step. And like if you do that, it'll give an error. So it doesn't mean you have to change your function entirely. You can just have modes. So like let's say here, uh, in this case, I I do a two meters. So what this will this function will do will convert miles to kilometers to meters. So my default will be kilometers. But though like let's say if there's a mile, then you can you can also um, define that. So this is what I did here, length unit equals zero, so that's kind of like my default. And if I need to change it, I'll, I'll, um, I'll set it to one. And the reason I do that is because most of the uh, uh, libraries work like that, so that's why I just follow that uh, style. So like in this case, like if length unit equals equals one, length equals length times 1.60924. All I'm doing here is I'm converting my miles to kilometer. And then, okay, so once we have that length in kilometers, I'll just multiply by a thousand to get our meters. So if you if um if you have meters, you just go straight here and multiply by a thousand. But if you have miles, you um convert it to kilometers first, and then you go to uh, what's it called uh, meters. Um, I do recognize that you probably could do this without this method. Don't, but the only reason I'm doing is just to show you that. Let's say you have steps that you like might need to take or might not need to take. Like so, like if, if you get miles, you need an extra step. So that's why you set this to one in that case. So like if you see here, we have we had those what's it called? Fifty miles, eighty kilometers, which is almost the same. 
So let's say if I want to convert this to meters, all I do is km. But let's say I input a mile, then okay, length unit equals one. So now it knows okay, I'm imp I'm receiving a mile, so I'll convert that to a kilometer. So I do this. Keep on forgetting to do that. So now, if you notice, we we're getting eighty thousand from both. So of course, it's that that's slight error since. 50 miles is not exactly 8,000 kilometers, but you can see they're both the same. Now, this is where it becomes useful. And the reason I showed you this example is, look at this. Instead of having four functions do this, you can just have one and just have modes. So, in this case, conversion. So, the default mode will be from, I believe, miles, um, yeah, miles to kilometer. Okay, I see what I did. So the the fault will go will be from kilometers to miles, and then if you set it to one, it'll be from kilometers to miles. Oh, sorry, miles to kilometers, and then here I'll. This will convert kilometers to meters, and this will convert miles to feet. So if you notice here, conversion kilometers. So this will convert that to miles. I put mile here. Mi uh, I put mile here as my very, oh, sorry, my not my length. And then mode equals one. Okay, so this will convert this to kilometers. I put kilometers here in mode two, and this will convert this into um, meters. And then I put mile here as my length, and this will convert into feet. So, I think one thing I want to mention is, if you put mode equals zero here, this will work as well. So that actually is one point where you can do that, like just leave that out, or you can put it in. But since the default will always be zero either way, you don't need to do that. Right there, 49, 80, 80,000. And if you notice, these are the same numbers we got with those four functions. But if you notice, now we just have one function and we can just change the mode if you want to change like one or two things from a function. So you don't have to uh, create a bunch of functions, you can have one function that does multiple things. And that's what in the end you want to do have functions that can be capable of doing multiple tasks. And then I w I'm going to go real quickly into arguments. So it's kind of similar to the situation. I don't really use these myself, but I'm just going to go over it. So let's say you don't know how many arguments or variables you're going to pass in. You could do this. Like in this case, RSVB party. So I'm going to pass in um, a string of people going to my party. And it will print out a list of everybody going to my party. Hopefully, you're not doing parties right now, but. This is the function for that. So I do this. So like now I'm gonna say myself, person one, person two, person three, person four. And you do this, and you it'll print out everybody from like these uh, different variables. So it just in this case it read what five variables. So um, but let's say I don't know you have no friends and no one went to your party. Like this, so now there's only one, and it can do that as well. So it's flexible, and what you can do. However, I'll iterate again. I don't really use this. I don't really like it too much since, since um, you should probably know what arguments you're and if variables you're going to input. So what if I have more than one thing I need to input? I usually just call a vector and just use a vector. So I don't really use this, and I also find it easier when you have a vector to iterate through it. So you can use this, and I, I really never used it myself, but there are reasons you might want to use this, but very, very few. So now, so now I've, you notice I probably went a lot over functions today, and especially the, the default arguments. So, okay, I showed you some examples of why this might be useful, but here's another reason why this is super important. Let's go back to Canvas, right? 
I should use this class instead of mine. So let's say you want to use the function pandas data frame dot merge, right? So when you call these functions in Python, when you start using functions and like their libraries, like let's say you want to do stuff with data frames, you want to do plots, you're going to call a library. And what the library is, is basically a collection of functions pre-written for you, so you don't have to think about it. And so once you go into documentation, notice here, right. So basically this is just saying like, this is just a default variable, it's not default, this is just a variable you need to input. You, it just won't assume a, a, say a variable right here. But then like how, enter, on, non, left, on, right, on, non. You see all these different default cases. So if you just put this one thing, it should work most of the time. But if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that the function won't work. Sometimes you need to change one of the default um, parameters in a, in a function. So you see here, it will explain to you default false, default false, um, like uh, list like default is x dash y, bool the default is true. So you can actually read each of these arguments, what it does, like oh, you know what, in this situation I need something else from this function. And then you can change it. And if you notice they're not giving you the code, you can actually find the source code as you, if you want to. But you don't really need it. You just need to know what it does and how to change the argument. So that's kind of the idea of functions that you don't need to know what's actually going on in that code. As long as you know what it does and what the arguments are, you should be able to use it. And that's an important thing. It's like knowing how to use libraries, you need to know how to use functions. And once you start creating your own functions, this will be useful as well. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. And it, I'll show you another one, like pandas.melt. You see how there's all these different default functions, but you can also change those as well. Like you see, they even tell you what the defaults are. And okay, so like okay, what if I don't want to use pens? Let's go to another one. Um, numpy. So this is another one. I can see you want to round something with uh, num numpy. So you see here, you're, you're let's say you round whatever input you're given, and then you can define the number of decimals. So like you want to round this to zero decimals, to one decimal, to two decimals. That's a default function. I'll just round to like uh, 0 0.0. So like let's say if you have 3.5, we'll round to 3. But let's say you have 3.56, and you want to do decimals equals 1, that'll be 3.5. So like the only thing you need to know there is like it has a default case, but you can change that. And that's super important with all of these libraries. Like and then you see another numpy example here, dot array. Look at how it all most of the explanation here are just parameters. So it's so like the way you know how these things work is usually most of the time with parameters. So that's why they're super super important. Another one, let's say scikit-learn is for um, basic machine learning. You can see here, uh, damping equals 0 0.5, max error equals 200, convergence. It's telling you all of the default parameters. Same thing with plotly, etc. So hopefully the does that kind of explain the importance of default parameters? And I think we're at one, so that will be it for today. Next week I'll start with pandas, and that will be very cool. Uh, and does anybody have any questions? Yeah, uh, sorry, Luis, I joined late today. So, did you cover uh, classes? Classes? Uh, I have not. I will cover that probably no. next week. Oh. Uh, is uh, your uh, um, lecture being recorded? I believe so. Hopefully, I did press the recording. I did. Oh, okay. Uh, so, where can we find the recorded lecture? Okay, so I want to ask you guys. Um, are you guys fine with me uh, putting this on YouTube? Uh, no, I. Uh, so, what do? Uh, so, I just search your name in the YouTube. So, do you prefer if I upload it to YouTube and you guys can watch it on YouTube? Or do you prefer that I, let's say, just keep it in a Google Drive for everybody in this course? I don't really mind, because, uh, I mean, either way, because I have my, it's just my, like, initial, it's not even my name showing. Okay, so... And even if it's my name, it's not really a big deal, because, you yeah. know, people are searchable on YouTube anyway. Alright, so I'll just put it on YouTube, since I'll just curious if anyone had any privacy concerns, but I'll just put it on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if anyone else has concerns, they can share it, but I, I, I don't really care either way. Uh, 
I think uh, if you are uh, maybe using the some of the water districts data for uh, in these classes, then maybe it's better to upload in a Google Drive. Uh, otherwise, it's just fine. Yeah, I won't use any uh, water district data. I'll use something similar to it. Like it will be the exact same format. I'll just yeah. it won't be data pertaining to any water district. I'm just gonna create my own data. So yeah, since this course is kind of open, I'm gonna use the notes later on. It's kind of designed for it not to use any data from any of the water districts. Okay, so I think. We are good for today, and I guess we can start next week. And I'll upload, upload these on YouTube. Okay, thanks. Right. Thank you, Luis. You're welcome. And I forgot to record half of the lecture today, so I'm so sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. All right. Okay, bye. 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 Bye-bye.